Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Delighted. Um, This week we are going to be jumping into another, um, I guess, emotional topic. I guess that's what we can call them. (laughs) Daily truths, I don't know, whatever we want to call them. Um, And this week's going to be on bitterness. And so uh, to get started, I guess a definition of bitterness would be defined as anger and disappointment at being treated unfairly um, for like the simple term of it. Uh, But I think bitterness in general kind of goes way deeper than just that. Yeah, probably a lot lot of it stems from resentment and envy and those feelings for sure. Definitely. It's it's synonymous with those emotions as well. So um, I think... It, if you allow bitterness to take root, it takes deep roots yes. within your soul. Uh, so we all know that roots lead to bad fruit. So absolutely, bitter roots. absolutely. When we entertain bitterness, it can wrap and it can warp and distort our perspective, um, teaching us that Jesus can't heal, can't reconcile, or can't enact justice. In a sense, we kind of lie to ourselves when we're bitter and not truly believing that Jesus Christ is sufficient for our happiness. Yeah. I think uh, one of the most well-known stories of bitterness in the Bible is definitely Cain and Abel. Absolutely. Cain becomes consumed by bitterness for his brother and and God when he feels unjustly treated um, relative to his brother Abel. And Cain damns God and kills his brother out of hatred and pity and bitterness for himself. I mean, this story definitely warns us of the sinful essence of bitterness and to conversely have humility while in despair. Absolutely. And, you know, we, um, I guess the epitome of bitterness as well in another story is Job's wife. Anger could have would be an under, uh, understandable reaction to God allowing her children to die and their family's assets to have been taken. And instead of accepting God's sovereignty like Job mm-hmm. um, or even being honest and talking to God, yeah. um, she allowed her anger to lead to resentment, which then turned her character into bitterness. And, you know, th- we see this in Job 2.9 and she tells Job, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Um, Bitterness is easy to fall into. Absolutely. It's also possible to reject bitterness and return to faith in God. I think it's definitely um, shows that we need to take ownership of our situations and relinquish what is out of our control to God. And a bitter spirit can happen to anyone, any of us, if we aren't careful. Uh, A bitter root can grow subtly in our hearts long before the fruit of it rises to the surface. Unresolved anger and unforgiving attitude, resentment, jealousy, and continued disappointment are just a few of life's struggles that cause us to plunge into bitterness. I think the good thing is, is there is a remedy for the bitter spirit. It's it's being in the word of God and taken in small doses over a period of time can release that bitterness and resentment and envy and, and allow us to know love and joy and peace from the Holy spirit. And knowing that God doesn't leave us to wallow in our bitterness. Instead, he plucks us up and grants us healing when we ask. Absolutely. And, you know, we don't have to cling to bitterness, hurt or frustration, which I know that's so much easier said than done as uh, we've gone through, what, the past nine years. (laughs) We've dealt firsthand watching other people's bitterness affect our own lives. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we, you know, we all have a choice. We can either become bitter or better in our Mm -hmm. lifetime we can take certain situations and circumstances in our life it's almost kind of like having bitterness is also being a victim yeah and you know yes hard times happen 
really sucky things in life happen. Um, but being better is that God loves, forgives, and makes a way for his people to escape the bitterness and to be, and instead to choose bitter over better would be to just live a lifetime full of regret yeah, and know that, you, sure. you know, you're, you're either, um, just kind of all around angry and that is going to feed off and you're going to be burdened yourself and you're going to be a burden to others mm -hmm. because of that, that you, that style and that life that you're choosing. Yeah. You're bearing bad fruit essentially. Absolutely. I think it's kind of crazy because you know, one of the, um, verses that we've taught our daughter is Ephesians 4.32. <laughs> and as a three-year-old, Ephesians 4.32, she, she, you know, she understands it as be kind to one another. Mm -hmm. But when you look at Ephesians 4.31 and 32, it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. I think that's such a important verse, like obviously for bitterness, but for a lot of negative emotions, like forgiving, loving, tenderhearted, understanding, patience, all those feelings, you know, take it as God would use those same emotions for us. We should be mirroring that and that would help obviously eliminate a lot of bitterness and negative emotions and feelings absolutely we can give these things to god asking that he would bring beauty from the ugliness of bitterness and like you said turn it into something better for sure to be better <laughs> <laughs> um you know we can ask for his strength to extend the grace we we grip so closely to in our hearts i think it's easy for us like if we look at certain things in our lives i know for us personally you know, neither one of us um, had father figures growing up. And that's not uh, to say that we don't have great relationships with one of them or uh, anything like that at all now. Um, yeah. But obviously growing up, being a kid and not having that other parent, regardless of whether it's a dad or a mother, that can make you bitter. And in, if it's not, you know, interpreted one way, I think, you know, like for me personally, my dad's never been involved in my life. Haven't seen him in years. And I could have taken that life and run with it and been really bitter and angry, upset. And instead, I realized that I've had a father all along. Mm -hmm. He's my father, God. He's my Abba. And instead of, you know, acting out or holding on to that, I've been able to truly see how protected I am and to be a daughter of Christ. It's an incredible feeling. It wasn't always easy to get to that place. And not to say that I didn't struggle and didn't have my falls, but to be in that place now and to be so comforted knowing that God is there, he's yeah. protecting and he's given me his word and the Holy Spirit surrounds me. It makes me so much stronger. Yeah. For sure. I think when bitterness attempts to take over our hearts, we definitely need to look at to God and remember that he overcame the world. While the Lord has promised us that he will never leave us. He never promised that life would be easy. Many times life doesn't seem fair and we are tempted to give over to bitterness. Trials and difficulties will pass away, but God's grace is given in abundance for those who lean and trust in him through the tough times of life, just like you said. And the Lord will reveal the sinfulness of bitterness in our hearts and compel us towards seeking his healing and forgiveness. We aren't stuck in that bitter feeling as long as we recognize our failings, repent, and humble ourselves to receive a new spirit from the Lord. Absolutely. There's freedom from bitterness, and it's found in the in an intimate understanding of the grace of God. If you don't understand that, it, it's not going to come easy. And yeah. obviously the best way to understand it is to open up your Bible and read it and mm -hmm. read his word, read how 
he is just so full of grace. I mean, look at what he did. He sent his one and only son to die for a sin that he didn't commit. Jesus was sinless and he died for our sins Mm -hmm. so that we can be in relationship with God. And so, um, you know, I think when you look at, even in the Old Testament and you look at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, it says, you shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And, you know, even in the Old Testament, you know, we're called, you know, this is kind of like the second great commandment and it's the most quoted often, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And, you know, when we have times of bitterness, it's really hard to remember that and reflect on those things because, you know, our neighbor doesn't necessarily have to be the person on the same street as us or the house next door. Our neighbor is everybody. I think uh, another verse that I definitely like that refers to bitterness as well is uh, Romans 3, 21 through 25. And it says, but now the righteous of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is Jesus Christ, whom put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. Pretty much that's just what you had said, but from (laughs) the the words of the Bible in the New Testament. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's... It's just crazy. So, you know, in Acts 8, 23, it says, for I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of inequity. And it's just so, it's so easy for us to sit here and say, you know, don't be bitter, lay it at God's feet. We're not saying that at all. It's not easy to not be consumed in ourselves and in our own anger and feel like we are righteous. Mm -hmm. But the cold truth is is that we're not righteous to feel this way and that we need to be quick to forgive you know we there's like a metaphor you know there's only one way to deal with bitterness get rid of it like you'd get rid of your gross smelly garbage you know retaining bitterness has the same effect in a sense you know if you have gross smelly garbage in your house and you sit in it long enough you know the smell kind of sits there you kind of adapt to the smell and you no longer smell it but anybody else who comes and visits the house they're going to smell it yeah it's the same way with bitterness if you hold on to that bitterness you'll be in it for so long you don't even see it anymore but those around you see it which again turns back to whether you're being better or bitter You know, if you are choosing that life to be bitter, you're going to be burdening others while being a burden to yourself. Yeah. And so I think no no matter what situation that's brought on your bitterness, the love of God can cover your heart and mind so that we can be free. Um, Remembering and meditating on the love of Christ for you, you will long for his presence and peace. You know, deep in our bitterness, we can we can forget how much we are loved this love of God not only sent his son to die for you, but it also wants what's best for you in the lifetime. So, you know, even when you're deep down in this bitterness and anger and envy in your life, get to a place where you can surround yourself with, you know, other mentors and Mm -hmm. people who love you and love you enough to tell you the truth, love you enough to support you and bring you back to God's word and help you and and continue reading the word because that's what's going to change your heart yeah and pray out loud yes he hears you absolutely and you know i'm sure there's some believers out there who think they you know they don't need to forgive if they don't feel like it i know personally that's been something you know i've struggled with more than you you know with our certain circumstances that we've had with family Mm -hmm. that's not always easy i feel like i i shouldn't have to forgive or 
you know, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, or my feelings are justified for absolutely. This like, or I'm that righteous reason. in this situation, and yeah. and you know, the problem is, is that keeping that in our hearts towards others tends to lead down a road that isn't good eventually, mm-hmm. and it's not going to lead you anywhere other than in your own pity wallow dark circle that eventually nobody's gonna want to be around you because that's going um to kind of be the only thing you talk about i don't know if personally you've ever had this happen but you know if you've ever been around somebody that they just don't like something so much that every time you're around them they feel like they have to tell you how much they don't like something and eventually it becomes the only thing they can talk about nobody else wants to hear it anymore they've heard it the first time or the second time and eventually nobody's gonna want to be around you because yeah. they don't want to hear it and so you know the lord has instructed us to forgive and not only when we feel like it but because that's the obedience to him is to forgive other people yeah. and we forgive as we've been forgiven mm-hmm. immediately <laughs> and it doesn't you know, forgiveness doesn't remove the consequences, but it frees us from the burden of being bitter and yeah. holding that bitterness in our hearts. And repenting for it. Absolutely. It's just one of those situations where, you know, again, we're not saying that we don't understand it and that we haven't been there and that it's going to be this quick step, you know, end all be all, yeah. you know. Oh, just, we solved the problem. We've yeah. solved all of our, the world's problems of being bitter and angry. Just don't do it. <laughs> you know, and that's that's not what we're saying is we're hoping to guide you and lead you and help give you the best advice and, you know, give you situations in the Bible where there have been instances like that. Yeah. Plus, know? we know that Jesus also was exposed to every temptation out there as well. So, Absolutely. I think... Like you said, repenting and laying everything at God's feet is going to be the best way to get yourself there. And again, surround yourself with people who love you enough to make sure that they keep you in God's word Yeah. and love you enough to speak truth to you, not their truth or your truth, the truth. Yeah. And, and, and making sure that you have that true, um, set of friends that are honest Mm -hmm. with you all right you want to close with the prayer (laughs) wrapping it up absolutely we can close with the prayer and again you know you guys if you need anything or are ever um if you need that community you know don't be afraid to reach out to us you know we are there we can be that community we may not be in your state but we are there to listen and help. If you want to start looking at us to, you know, talk to you weekly, or if you have something that you want to just get off your chest and lay it at somebody else's feet to help guide you or how to respond to something, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And also please don't forget to leave us a review and a five-star rating Mm -hmm. because it does definitely help us. I know it seems like a lot of work, but it's really not. And it helps (laughs) us climb the charts and it helps us become more visible when you share with your friends so that's definitely um, helpful for us and we are grateful for you who do that um so again you know if you need anything we're here and we hope that this podcast um episode helped you understand a little bit more about bitterness and helped relieve it off your heart or maybe if this is something you're struggling with maybe this is something that can help you and you know i'll let you go ahead and close in the prayer Jesus, we pray that you uh, help us use this platform to reach those who need to hear it. Uh, Pray that you help us deliver your word and that there are people out there listening that are taking this in and using it in their life and passing it to their loved ones. And we pray that your word reaches everybody and opens and softens hearts everywhere Uh, we just want to thank you for your endless love and sacrifice for us in jesus name amen amen